Hey, Kip, hang on. I'm here, I'm just moving stuff around. So today, I thought I would show you guys what I've been up to. But I've been building a base for my Leonardo quarter scale. And today, I thought I'd do some finishing touches and show you guys what I get up to. Obviously, there's Leonardo. And there's the back wall with my bricks and sewer pipe. Let's get the other bits. So this, this is the base it sits on, with all the slime and stuff like that. So he's all, the light's probably killing it. They're all toxic-y looking. And I can slide it up in there, just like that. It's not square against the wall, though, because um, there's a power point in the way. And a little bridge. And my little sewer pipe. Which will stick in today. We'll put all that in. Fits in good. See if I got on. Kevin. Hey matey, how are you? Alright, so when that's actually square against the wall, we've all set up nice and neat like that. That's what we get. I'm going to probably pick that camera up and have a look. So I put all like the slime in the water, the toxic waste. It's coming out the pipe, kind of run up the pipe, and I've got it coming out the wall, and it's my wires and stuff hanging out. And I just stress the bricks by, I spray, because they're foam, I spray them with a bit of um, oil-based spray paint, and it started to eat the Fine, which is perfect because it gives it that real textured look. So, um, hey, please, pop and there you go. So, I've um, yeah, I've done that, and this is just that pearl luster paint. Hang on, I'll turn this light off and see if it makes any difference. It's really toxic green, as you can see. And I used this stuff. So, the color is focus a little bugger pearlized lime green, perfect for doing. Toxic shit. All right, let's turn that back on. All right, so today all I'm doing is finishing touches. So I'll get rid of the wall for the time being. We'll work on the base. So I have to work on this piece. Um, as you can see, it's just made out of foam. And this is that foam, that packing foam you would get um, anything, like you buy a fridge and you get packing foam or a table or any of those things, that's what that packing foam is. Um, and I've just cut a couple of circles. So all the pipe is, that is just a um, like a poster pack you'd send in the mail and I've just cut it to size. I've then drilled holes. No, you see that? There you go. Sorry, guys. I then drilled holes in the top there and bottom, obviously, and slid in some kebab sticks. Just you find ones that are about the right size, and I slid them in. And uh, I've just painted them up with a bit of copper paint, which I don't have with me, but it's actually copper based airbrush paint because it's water based, it won't destroy your cardboard. And I've just I always paint black first, I give it a wash in black because it takes in all the indentations and um, little spaces where there's damage. And black at first, and then light chrome over it. And you can always have a little bit of. I just I use airbrush paint because I do a lot of airbrushing on things. So this is just a bit of um, trans semi opaque light brown, and you can mix it with white or black and tone it up or down, whatever you like. So um, hey, hot Cheeto fingers, how you going? Sorry, I've got to turn backwards to see the screen. So if I don't say hello, I apologise. I'll catch up. So that's all I've done is a few kebab sticks and put them in the slid them through, and they don't need to be straight because you know what all the sewers look like—they're all bent and strapped. 
I was actually going to cut, like put a break in it and bend it over, but I think it works quite well like that. It's got a bit of a gap in it, which I'll fill later today with a bit of, um, I'll get some silicon, just white silicon. And the cool thing about silicon is you can actually mix any color in the silicon you want as long as it's water-based paint. So, for example, I'm going to move around a bit here. The actual water that I've put in this diorama to run through the sewer, that is actually white silicon. And I've got a little video I'm going to make later and show you what I did. And I've mixed brown in it first to get it that sludgy colour. And then I added um, a bit of green into it. And then a bit of, actually, I added candy green because candy's totally opaque. So I added a bit of candy green into it. And then I added a bit of brown into it and mixed it through. And then I laid it in and just swirled it a bit so it looks like it's flowing water. And then I just put some pearlized candy green through it to make the slime. And that's my water effect. Like it's not... I'm lucky because sewer water is not clear, so you can just make it really muddy looking and terrible. Um, so um, that's how I've done the water. And it took, I just got the fast drying stuff and it took 25 minutes to set and it is pretty thick. So that's the way to go, I think, with sewer. I think it looks pretty cool. When you put the whole thing together, it makes a lot more sense. Yeah, I'm good, Kev. Days only just started, so I've only been up two hours. It's 8.58 a.m. here but it's as hot as hell already. So um, I'm in for a long day, I think. Um, <laughs> you're in line waiting to pick the kids up from school, and I've just sent mine to school. That's so nuts, but I'm a day ahead. So does that mean my kids are a day smarter? Right, so that's how that all fits together. So one thing I have noticed now that I'm on screen, I'm going to have to paint that piece there with a bit of brown, but that's so easy to do. Um, I'm actually going to add a bit more um, damage to this today. So I'm going to put like some broken pebbles here and I'll probably um, put some like green moss and grasses and stuff in there. So, you know, like in a sewer and you see them popping up. Um, we'll do that today. So bear with me. It'll take a bit of time to do this, but if you've got the time to watch, I've got the time to show. Um, if I go quiet, don't stress. I'm just concentrating. Hanging out in the toy room, mate. Hot Cheeto. I'm sitting in my office. I've got a broken ankle and ripped tendons, and I can't do anything. So I might as well build stuff while I'm sitting at home for a couple of weeks. All right. Um, to make the bridge, um, I really wanted to get a texture to it, and you can't see it on camera, but it is actually just a bit of white board, foam board. It's like a really hard compressed board, and I've covered it in cork. So you can actually buy, whoops, I've chopped and cut the hell out of this, but you can buy cork roll in a mat. So, and I use this all the time. So I've used it to make the like brass plates or the steel plates that run along here, a bit of dirt on it, like that. Um, so one side's like really coarse and the other side's really smooth. Um, depending on what you want to use. I use the coarse side just to give it a bit more sort of texture. Um, yeah, I did my ankle checking the mailbox. Can you believe that? I was in flip-flops. I think you Yankees call them flip-flops. We call them thongs. Um, I walked out to the mailbox and it's sort of on a little like a, a curvy bit to our driveway. And um, it was on my birthday and I rolled it and I felt like my bone foot just go full so I was and the bone hit the ground. So... That was four and a half weeks ago, and I'm still waiting to see the surgeon to see if I have to some bone removed, which would be nice. Um, Funko display looks amazing. Oh, right, okay. Hang on, I'll show you. That's what it really looks like. So I don't know how many is in there. There's quite a few. But I'm seriously lost interest in Funko Pops. Like, the whole case is full. Um, but I'm done, I think. I'm um, just collecting figures and stuff now, like those ones. I'm really like, looking for vintage stuff, like that old, how do I see this now? The old Spider-Man gumball machine there. So you push the button or drop your coin in, he lights up and he says a couple of things and the tray comes out with a gumball. So it's a money box. They're the things I really like. Um, I'll show you, remind me, Kev, if you're still on later. I grabbed... A spawn the other day that looks like that. See him in the back there? 
I'll have to get him out and give you a look at him and see if he's any good. He cost me a dollar, so I thought I'd probably grab him. So there's all my stuff, see? Right, and there's obviously more here. I collect vintage Spider-Man stuff, see? So like the board games from 1960 odd, there's some cards and stuff in there. Oh, the old motorbikes and cars I've been collecting as I go along. And the same on the other side, past my computer. So same, like I've got the old 66 Batman stuff, old cards, um, 66 Batman game. If you ever see one of them yell out because I need pieces, I'm missing a couple of little things. I've got old cards in there. And then we go up further. A few figs. Sorry, I'm not used to this camera. Um, Adam West signed Batman, some artwork. Uh, my artwork. And then over there, I've got all my grail pops hiding up the top. I won't focus because it's too far. There it goes. So they're all hiding at the top. So if thieves come in and go to the cabinet, they don't see them ones. And then I've got a whole wall of comics that are framed up. Nothing special about them other than they're all um, the year I was born. So I've got all my favourite characters in there. And um, it started off my wife bought me the five Spider-Mans in the middle. They're all English um, published comics. And they're all from um, 1975. So if you've got the math scale, you know how old I am. Um, and I think, Kev, you're older. I just thought I would say that. And then I've just got cabinets and parcels to send out to everybody that needs them. And some guitars. I've got nine guitars. Um, how many have got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight guitars there. Sorry, now I've got another four in the shed probably out in the garage. There's another four locked away that I don't use. I'm going to just swap them in and out whenever I use them. So there you go. That's my little world that I'd like to keep the kids out of. Yeah, this is my little sanctuary. So in the, right down the backyard of our house, we had a spot that never got any sunlight. There was no grass. The dogs just destroyed it. So I built a, a big office out, out the back here, and this is where I hide. So it's lovely. All right. So what was I talking about? Okay. So to get the texture on top of these things, I use cork. And um, you just, it sticks down with super glue. But don't put the super glue on this. And then try and stick it down because it, it just soaks it in and it doesn't stick. So put it on that first and then lay it on and it grabs instantly. So I don't know if you guys in America get this stuff, but Loctite super glue is like amazing. It's just you get it on your fingers and you've got to get a knife to cut it off. It's wicked. So um, that's what I use. Um, the foam board itself, this stuff here, is actually, well, I've painted it to look like a rock, but it's actually just, I don't know if you can see, it's just this insulation board they call it in here or i think in the states they call it insulation board um or foam pressed particle board is another thing i've heard it called it's like a yellowy color but you can get blue and green they're all the same the difference is between this and this white stuff is that you can sand this cut it really smooth um make any shape you want out of it this stuff here when you cut it it falls up and pulls out in chunks so you've got to be aware of that so i deliberately did that on the front around the pipe to make it look like it's just battle damaged a bit. That's how I've done that. All right, so, yeah, this is the stuff you want. Um, I think in Australia it's a lot different because um, our panels come in like uh, 100 mil, which I think is maybe two inch wide, and that's like far too thick for a lot of stuff. So I had to cut mine down the right down the middle, and that took forever to get it to like an inch. And then some bits I cut again and cut it down to half inch. But I think I know in the States you can get half inch, inch, and two inch. So half inch is the best by far. You can work with it so much better. And depending on what scale on that you're working to. So, um, and another thing I use is these little magnets. I've never, not the base, I haven't used them before. I've used them for toys and stuff that won't stand up. Or I need um, other things that I've built, like bases, etc., where I want. Um, pop vinyls and that stand up so they stop falling over all the time. Um, really cool little thing. And I've seen guys that actually put them in like, like the back of, sorry, the back of the base here. And even still, they put one there and one there and one in the base. And it just goes 
click and stays there rather than gluing everything down, which is a really cool idea. So especially if you're like shipping them over, it's like if I made one and shipped it over to somebody, I would do that. That way you could just sort of clip them in and you could just lay it flat when you sent it. Instead of having this great big box, this massive box, you just lay it all flat and um, ship it. So that might be something we can do later down the track. All right, so what else have I got? So my box of tricks down here. Can you all hear me okay and see me okay? No problems? This is what I used for the um, pot. Basically, you just buy them in any wood craft store, any craft stores you guys have got over there. They're just little sticks. Just paint them up. Easy peasy. And you can just use a scalpel to cut them. They're pretty easy to break off. And you can sand them, which is another cool thing. Um, I use, and I'll be using this today. I've ripped, I've put a hole in the bloody wrong spot. Medium green bushes. It's just green foliage. You can get that at all your model stores, etc., etc. And it's basically green fluff. See that? That's all it is. But the cool thing is you can paint it. So you could put a bit of glue on in one of these and stick this on, and it looks like there's like mouldy stuff growing. See that? So that's what I'll be doing. I'll be putting some of that around the place. Um, some little rocks, we'll be doing that as well. I'll show you how I paint all that. So I guess rather than me battling shit, I might just get on with the show and do some work. I've got grasses. I've got um, coarse sand. I'll use that a bit today, actually. That's really cool stuff. That'll work awesome. I know you said awful, what a dick it is. All right. And for rocks, etc., what's really cool for doing models is the stones you put on the bottom of your fish tank. They're already little stones, they're perfect scale. So awesome. If you're not sending it, they're perfect because the weight's not a problem. And as you get into bigger stuff, like I go around and look in the garden and find everything I want. I don't buy anything to do this stuff with. I don't know I'm buying stuff, but like, why would you not go and get some rocks out of your garden or you're driving down the street and you see a pile of rocks? Go and grab them because they're just perfect size. And I go and grab whatever I see. So larger ones, they've got ready to go. But this is my favourite thing to get. You see old pine trees? Can't break the bark off them because that bark then becomes rocks when you paint it. Once you paint a piece of bark like this and put the grooves and highlights and shadows into it, that instantly becomes a rock. And I don't have a base here to show you that I've done. No, I don't. That's right. But, yeah, that is a rock. You might not see it. But there's videos I've done on Funko Joe's channel. And I think one's a – it'll be the – Chewbacca base, a Star Wars base one. Go and have a look and you'll see how I make rocks. Uh, Kev, if you're still on, you should tell um, Sandman that I'm live. He'll be interested in this, I think. If you're not driving. All right, so let's get started. Oops. So I'll put the bridge on last because that's the piece that's going to get in the way of everything. And we'll do the back later. So I'm going to stick that down with a bit of super glue. Where I want it. And what I've done is, um, I'll try and show you. I've painted, I actually sat it in there and painted around it. So it gave me a line so I can see where I wanted to stick it next time I went back. So that's what I'm going to do. So a bit of the old glue glue. And I'll just put it in droplets rather than smear it because then the droplet actually hangs and you can stick it on easier. And we're on. So within a couple of seconds, that's down. There you go. We're on. Uh, not coming off. Awesome glue. <laughs> pew pew. <laughs> Crack me up. All right. So 
The next thing I'll be looking at is you want to just distress this a little bit. So we need some stones. So this is where I come into it. Now, I always base my stones black first. And you can paint them first or you can stick them on first. In this case, I'm going to paint them first because obviously I've already set a lot of this up. So what you do is you just find some common little stones. Find the ones that, like, don't just grab any old one. Grab a few that you think would look cool. Not the same size. Little ones make... Heaps of cool. See, you just lay them out where you want them. So obviously, if you've got a spot, and I'll turn this a little bit that way for you. Gabrielle, sorry, how long have you been doing props? Oh, as you mean like dioramas like this? Um, for about three months. I've always been hardy, but I've been doing lots of um, pop vinyl mini bases for people, and I thought, well, I've got some quarter scale figurines that I would like bases behind. They add a bit of um, something to look at. So I started making these. So we'll divert a little bit. So this was the first one I made. So I don't know if you can see that. I'll try sitting down here. All right. So this is a base I made of a little cemetery. And the hardest bit was, like I did all the headstones and there's a little headstone. Whoops, I broke that. There's a little headstone behind there, see that? That's a little graveyard and it's supposed to be like in the dead of night, but it's sitting on a wall with like a bit of black behind it, so it gives it a bit of spookiness. The hardest bit was getting, I don't know if I'll focus on that, all the cobwebs. I tried using a hot glue gun and um, like pulling it out really thin and spraying it. It didn't work. Another guy said to me, spray hairspray in front of a heat gun and it smears it and dries it instantly and makes it look like spider webs and that didn't work very well either so guess what i did i grabbed the branches and these are off little trees and walked around the backyard underneath the kids cubby house and things where there's spider webs and just run it through and all the spider webs stuck so that this is what it's for see i made myself a little nosferatu and I've made probably 10 or 15 of these bases, different ones for different people. So um, lots of people ask for a lot of Star Wars ones. I just made a Harry Potter one where he's um, in the room with all the prophecy balls. I just made that one and sold it to a friend. So that's what started me, Gabrielle, if that's what you wanted to know. All right, so a bit of that. All right, so back to our little rocks. So I've got spots where the concrete, I've chiseled out the concrete. So we've got, obviously you're gonna have little rocks hanging around. So you would definitely have a couple of pieces sitting on the ground there. They don't have to match the hole. Um, who's gonna notice? And then you pop a few up in here too. Probably too many. Odds and evens. So when I learned photography, I was always taught the odds and evens. So um, even numbers look off. Even numbers look odd and odd numbers look even, if that makes sense. So when you look at a diorama and it's got four perfectly placed rocks, you go, ah, that looks normal. If it's odd numbers, it looks so much better. So this one here, I'll break that away. You just find where you think they'll look good. I'm just break it here. So that's how I do it. All right, so now that you've got your stones, and you don't need any across the back, obviously, because, well, that's a bit weird. You're not going to see them. But I might put one down here. Oops, not on the silicon, but one sitting on the stones there. My hands in the way, sorry. Put a couple there because you've got a broken rock there. And your pipe's going to slide in there, so you don't want to be putting anything there that's going to break it down. So maybe two little stones in there. So I'm going to add another two. Like that one, and maybe this one. Cool. Um, there's a couple over here, so maybe add another two for this piece over here. It's got a broken piece. 
Add that in. Righto. So that's as far as you go with stones. Whoops. So I need that one as well. And another one. Righto. So here comes the messy bit. This is where I get covered in paint. Righto. So you need a grey wash first or a black wash. In my drawer of paint. Oh, here's the metallic paint I use. I just found it. So yeah, it's metallic. You can get them in all colours. And this one is metallic copper. So I, because I do a lot of airbrushing, I've got... Hey, Ray Pops. I've got um, lots of metallic colours. But for this instance, we need a bit of blacky blacky. And a bit of white just to get things rolling. All right, so bear with me. I've got to get all my stuff ready. Um, when you're sticking your rocks and that down, or your bricks and that down to start with, I used to use PVA glue because it's non corrosive and it won't eat anything. But the problem I got was it takes forever to dry. So you spent weeks waiting for your diorama to get to where it needs to be. Um, I always have water that's muddy, muddy colour. And when I put the video up later of how I made the diorama, all the harder bits, you'll see why. Because the muddy water adds to your colours. So you don't need much paint. People squeeze out two thirds of a tube and end up wasting it all. Nothing special about the paint. It's just acrylic. Titanium white's the best white I use all the time. Um, my main go-to paint is Matisse. I always use Matisse and I use Structure and Flow. They're the ones I always use. But for dioramas, I like to use this one. But it's interchangeable, obviously. So you can, if you didn't have it, you could use anything you wanted. Type my oh, shizen. I just put white back on. One idiot. Let's go black. Um, now black. There's carbon black and there's Mars black. I used to think there was no difference, but that's rubbish. There is a huge difference. Carbon black is the best black I use. Series one black. It's like full on black. It's the way to go. All right. Especially for this stuff. So you got all your little rocks, and once you paint them, you just need to sit them in here until they dry. Okay. So if I can do something else while that's drying. So you use a bit of water and just tease out your colour. And you'll see what happens. I'll do it a bit more like this, eh? So you set your colour and the water. And bring it out. And bring the pigment with it till you get a nice pool of black that's not full pool. Right, and now you've got that. Grab a bit of white, smash it in there. And just tease the black back into it until you like the grey you see. Right, so I'm happy with that. Because I'm going to be adding a bit of green to this, all right? Well, once I paint it, I'll paint over it again with a bit of green. And then I'll do highlights on the rocks. All right, so that's your colour. That's what I've got with it. Right? It's like a slight, really deep, dark slate grey. Whoops. So you just grab your little stones. And you're going to get covered in paint. I don't care what you think. You're going to get covered in paint. Unless you wear plastic rubber gloves, which I do sometimes. But then you can't feel the stone in your hand and you don't know where you've painted so that's it. I'll just give it a wash. And that's all you're doing. I just sit your colour down. And a bit of yellow will show through. You can't do much about that. That's why you give it a second coat of another colour. Now, you've got to be really careful when you do this because you'll end up putting paint on your diorama. Grab your little tweezers if you've got any. I need a bigger set of tweezers. My fat answers are ridiculous. This might be even a better way to paint it, people. Look at that. The worst bit about being live is if I make a mistake, you're all going to see it. There's no hiding it this time. Oh, just give it a nice coat. And acrylic paint, especially in the weather I'm in today, will dry in five minutes. So we're pretty, pretty good here. And what usually happens is I lay the stones out on the diorama the way I want them. I then paint them all and lose them. And don't know where I had them. So I really don't care. I'll just rearrange them as I go. And usually the second time around that I rearrange them, I think it looks better than the first time anyway. So just give them a coat like that. 
And what I'm doing is each time I go to pick it up, I'm just wiping the tongs again, uh, the tweezers again, in case I put black on my diorama. Because black don't come off. Unless you can blend it, but then who wants to do that? All right, I'm getting there. So this diorama has probably taken me from start to finish a good week to get to this point. And I haven't been at it full time either, by the way. I've been in and out doing other stuff. But, um, yeah, good week. Once I made the bricks, and I did a video, if you want to look at how to make bricks, I did that for the tattoo toy on. He was asking about it, so I thought I'll make one. Oh, shit. That was lucky. Um, so, yeah, the tattoo toyner was asking how do I make my bricks. So I've done a video on that if you're interested. Go and have a look. It's on Funko J's site. It's a lot easier than people think. And that's my way. There's other guys that customise that do entirely different ways. But, well, mine works and it was easy, so I don't see a problem. I definitely need bigger tongs, guys. This is nuts. Keep dropping it. Not the old age. How's everyone doing over there? He's all from the States or have I got some locals? I know I've got a couple from the States. I've seen the names. So it's not like a 10 second job, this. It's such a tedious little thing. But if you take your time and get it the way you want it, they look awesome. Like so many people say to me, Oh, how did you do that? Can I buy one? It happens all the time. Like, it's like I've just spent 25 hours making it. And they think you can make it in five seconds for them. So they look like corn. What the little yellow stones? They'd be little corn if they are. Um, they do look a bit like corn. They won't once I paint them. Oh, we're getting to the little nitty gritty bits now. Now, one thing I will say is with that metallic paint, the green one, you got to be careful you don't go overboard because, yeah, sure, it's the Ninja Turtles and, yes, it's toxic, but you don't want it everywhere it'll, because it's so bright, it'll take away from everything else you've done. It's like in photography, if you're taking a photo of a landscape and there's a red object within the landscape, your eye will draw to the red object straight away. So uh, you see lots of people go, look at my beautiful photo, and the first thing you're looking at is a red stop sign. You see your eye's just drawn to it and it destroys their photo. So well, obviously red's going to be around. Oh, see, there you go. I've just lost the stone. Where'd that go? That put a bit of black on my thing. Great. I'm sure there's an easy way to do this, but I haven't worked it out. All right, there's all my little stones done, all right? So they, they, they don't look like corn now, but um, oh, we've got a Brisbane Queens, we've got a Queenslander. Hello. Hot up there today? I've got a phone ringing. Two seconds. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, I bet it's hot up there. 
not as hot as here. I'm complaining about how hot it is here. And it's bloody going to be heaps hotter in Queensland. All right, so that's the stones done. So what we'll do is we'll just let them sit on their own for a little while and dry off. Always put your lid on your water. I can't tell you how many times me or the kids have come in and spilt it and destroyed something. All right. So what we'll do is, oh, I'll leave it like that. I've got these little stones here that are designed as like little steppers for the bridge, and they're just foam. And what I did was I just roughed them up a bit so they look like just broken blocks. So the texture on the bottom of the foam, if you get a knife and just sort of give it a rough up, and then rub your finger over it. You can pull little bits out and it gives it that real stone look to it. Leonardo that looks cool. Yeah, that's what I'm building the base for. He's awesome, isn't he? Necker have just bought out um, seven-inch ones you guys get in GameStop. I can't wait. I'm trying my hardest to get them. Like they, I think they're 22 US. I think that's 99 US for the four-pack in GameStop. So in Australia, pop culture have got them on... $178, I think, which Australian, which is about $35 more than you guys. They're thievers. So anyway, so yeah, these are the foam blocks, and I've just scuffed them to give them a bit of um, character, and then I've blackwashed them, then so to make all the black go in the deep divots, and then I've just run a little bit of white over to give it a bit of a highlighted edge, and then just a bit of green, so it's just like a bit of moss grown on the top and a bit of slime that's been sitting around for a while. So you just pick the side that you think looks the best. So I'm going to go with that side to the front because it's a bit more weathered. And same with this one. It's got like a broken point there, and it's got a like it's got a scratch there. That's me. So I'll put that to the back so you can't see it. So we'll stick that down next. So we know the bridge. I'm right back in front on these to remind me, but I'm going to change it. I think. Just flip it around. So when I painted the bridge, I just thought about, okay, so if somebody was walking across it a lot, you would actually have, it'd be dirty on the side and it'd be shinier in the middle because that's where people are walking and that's how I've done it. And I actually, silly enough, made, I find them, foam bridge particles to go on the edge. And then when I put Leonardo on top, it was too big for him, so I had to take them off. And I spent ages making these. So this is what I made. I made these little walls, so like that little bridge side, so you know, it wouldn't fall off. Not these really. Um, what's this do? And when I made them, I painted them all up, spent all the time, and they were designed that that one would sit there, and bottom's not sanded, there's the other one, and that would sit there. And Leo would stand in the middle. And I just sort of added a bit more dimension to it. Problem was, Leo, come here. He don't fit. Every time you put him down, he just knocks him over. Very frustrating. So, and by the way, that Leonardo weighs heaps. So I had to make the bridge out of something a bit more sturdy. And it still flexes when he stands on it. So, yeah, what a shame. So maybe I'll find something else to use these for. I'll keep them. I won't chuck them away. All right, so that's where the bridge goes pretty much, and you just pick where you want. And you've got to remember that there's going to be a – you've got to think about what you're building here. So you're going to have a pipe. You're going to have a pipe that goes up there. You're going to have wires that come across, broken bricks. So you want him to stand mid sort of between the start of the broken bricks and the pipe, which is about there. So you just sort of line him up with where you need it to be. And then associate your brickwork where you need it to be. Now that brick there sits up higher than the other one, but who cares? Because like down in the sewers, nothing's proper. It's just wedge out there. And what I'll actually do is I'll put a bit of moss there and a couple of little stones there, and that'll fill sort of that gap in. So we'll do that now. Now this foam stuff's really cool. Actually, you might, what's it look like? Oh, can always test. No, the way I had it, I like. So this foam stuff's awesome. You can put Super glue straight on the bottom of it, like I just did. And power, she's down, don't come back. So just sit, but make sure you get it centered first because if you don't get this right, you don't get it back. Uh, he's on. 
and I turn them back. So just to show you how quick that is, that's been what, three seconds? For that coming off. That's awesome. So now you just get your other brick. Now that one's, I'll turn it a bit more for you. It's a bit more jagged and stiff, so that's cool. And I know the wedge it hard up against the back. Bit of glue. And I'm not more putting heaps of glue on, I'm only just putting a little smear on it. But don't slide it in because it'll leave the glue on the front end. Plop it in. Plop it, is that a word I guess? Squash him down. One, two, three, he's stuck. He ain't going nowhere. Easy peasy. Right up. Bye bye, bridge. And you'll hear me say things like lid on glue. That reminds me. <laughs> Just reminds me to do it. Wow, what's happening in the world here? Who's talking? I have the same Hulk that Leonardo was called. I have the same Hulk. Same Hulk, same Hulk. Oh, this Hulk. Yeah, okay, the 10 incher. So uh, my daughter, Jay. Or Funko J bought me that because I was helping with the videos, which is really nice of us. So I want the little one as well to go in front of it. But now that I'm sort of not pop collecting as I used to be, like I was mad on it. Um, wait and see. Maybe she'll buy me another one if I keep doing nice videos for her. All right. So they're down, glued good and proper. Stones are still drying. They're nearly there. So what we'll do is we might have a look at a bit of grass and stuff. So. I went out to my father's place. He has um, model trains that he used to do when he was younger. And he still had all this stuff lying around. So I pulled all the boxes out and found all this sort of grasses and stuff. And I'm about to use this now. So in this case, will I use super glue or not? I think I'll use PVA glue in this case because it's only little. Um, I just have to be careful because if I use super glue and I put it down, it's down, I can't move it. Whereas PVA glue, you can get a little brush and just sort of maneuver it around where you need it to go and the glue dries clear. So I've got this school glue. It is the worst glue I've ever used in my life. Um, but it dries clear or I've got, what's this one? That one, we might try that one, eh? It still dries clear. Nice sewer pipe and ooze. Yeah, I'm getting there. There's plenty on the backboard. I'll show you that too. All right, so I'll get another plate. So the stones can go up there to dry. I use these little plates all the time. God saves a lot of mess. What, 50 cents? You go and buy 50 plates or something silly like that? I just use them for everything. Thank you very much. All right, so... All I will do is grab a bit of this grass, and this grass has got little bits of yellow in it and little bits of red in it. But it looks like slime. And if you really wanted to, you could add some grass to it. This is like a fibrous grass. I use this a lot in rocks. See what it looks like? No, oh, take a little bit of that. And of course, you would need a little bit of this. Uh, bush foliage, it's clumpy. It's actually, I made Jade a Merinda pop vinyl base and used it as the tree foliage. It's really hard to work with because it's such clumpy stuff. You really need to soak it to get the glue to stick. And what they do is they mix um, PVA glue with a bit of, I reckon I might have it here. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. Actually, today, I don't have any. What they do is they mix isopropyl alcohol and PVA glue to a, like a liquid form, and they get an eyedropper, and they suck the glue out, and they slowly push it over the this stuff, and it soaks through it, and it makes it all stick together, and it sticks to the base. So then the next step I would do is I would actually glue that on first, if you super glued it, for example, then pour the isopropyl and um, super glue over the thumb, PVA glue over the top of it, and let it soak, and then it'll combine and grab the base. It's probably a much better way to fix it. That's how I'd look at it. All right, so you need to work out where you're going to put your glue. Right. 
So for this instance, we might put a bit of grass in the front here. This is where I get nervous because I think, oh. I'm actually, I'll put some grass around there and I'll have it come down the front and we'll just put a little bit across there. So get yourself the glue, get yourself a brush. Now this is water-based glue, so you'll be able to clean it out of your brushes. Get yourself a brush, so this is a synthetic brush. So this is like buy 10 pack for a dollar. I use these a lot for gluing and stuff because I chuck them, but I keep my like expensive brushes when I'm painting, obviously, it's a good idea. So you can either squirt it on and adjust or squirt it in the container you got here and use it like that. I would prefer this way. So get your brush with a bit of glue on it. And I'm gonna put some around here and down the front of that. Down there, and we'll put a little bit around the base. Right, so hopefully, if all goes well, when I sprinkle this on, it sticks. See that? So I'll get a bit closer. So yeah, I've just stuck it on. I've just given it a really good sprinkle over the top. Sorry, sorry. Don't need to get it to focus. And like this overlay, but when it's dry, you just shake it off and the rest comes off, okay? And you'll be left with the bit you hope for. So you can Press it on if you need to, if you really want to make sure it's sticking on. All right, just like that. Now you've got a bit of slime on your diorama. It's just getting hot in here. All right, so I'm going to do the same with the bricks, the little stones here. I'm going to put a bit on that. Because you've got these beautiful shiny stones, you would have moss on them. But don't do heaps. You just think, oh, where would the water sit and where would the moss grow? So I'll put a bit there. Sprinkle them on. My hand's probably in the way of the camera. Press him in. Nice, right, so you've got a bit more going there. Now, if you really wanted to, you could put like chunky moss in there. So like, we might do that, eh? Just see what it looks like. So you get a bit of your glue and we'll wedge a bit right there. Now the cork soaks the glue in, so you've got to be a bit quick. Just grab a bit of your mossy stuff and jam it in there. Oops, sorry. This bit of shit growing in the air. See, it doesn't stick the greatest. It's terrible. So what we'll try, what if I pour a bit over the top? Pear bubbles. Go away. And hopefully it ran off. Look at that. I was hoping it would soak in, but it might. Oh, it's soaking. Now that will combine all of it together. I can see it doing it already. And I might just for shits and giggles, we'll try a bit of the super glue and see if that works. I don't know if it'll soak through though. I reckon it'll just sit there. Well, now we're in trouble. Hang on, camera down. Super glue. Man down. Now that super glue is a pain in the ass, as you can see. As soon as it gets involved, it makes a mess. But there you go. So now I've got a bit of moss and a little dry clear. I want this bloody thing focused. Once to, there it is. So that bit of moss has gone a bit white, but that's all right. Don't freak because you can always paint it. Just run a bit of green over it, whatever you like. And there's the other bit. Ray Pops, yeah, I'm, I wouldn't say I was halfway there. I'm getting a lot closer, but definitely. Righto, so we might go back to our stones. Now, I've just used super glue on that brush, so it's screwed. 
I doubt I'll be able to get any goodness out of it. Oh, I might have surprised myself. All right, back to the rocks. Is a little rocks. Now our rocks are still wet. They might have to go outside and dry. I should have done that. They would have been drying 10 minutes ago. All right, so I'll go and put these outside. We'll let them dry. I'll be back in two seconds and we'll do the base. Sorry about that. All right, so our base is coming on quite nice. Now, if you wanted to add a bit of that green over here, you could. That sort of um, stuff, you know, the greeny slime. But we might do that. So find where our stuff is. And this is what happens. I stop and start. I see something and think, oh, that'll look good. So we'll just put a bit here, and I might put a little bit just across the front of the bricks there. So it just sticks on like that. And I'll do the same on the other side, because that brick has got like nothing on it. I'll put some on it, get it in there, and it would naturally be on there as well because it's growing everywhere. So, if you're ever unsure when you're doing this, of what, like, where should I put stuff, go outside in your own yards and look around at stones and stuff and see what's on them. You'll understand that dark little spots where water sits and pools are great spots for moss to grow. And in that case, that's what it is. So across here where, where my sewer pipe is, it's stuck down firmly, I'm going to have to put some more green to make it roll across here and into the sewer because that's where it's dripping. So you'd naturally have a little run down there and it might fork off and into there. And you would have moss around the bottom of this brick because obviously water would pull down the front and sit across the front of this little arc here, right? So we'll try that now. Has anyone got any questions they'd like to ask about any of this? You guys tried any of this before or want to try it? Now's the time to ask. All right, give it a bit of Stack it on, push it down. Now, I used to make these not do any of this. And I'd look back and I'd go and think, oh, well. Okay, what are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to try the wall soon. Yeah, cool, man. I'd, if you guys try stuff, I'd love to see them. Like, tag me in your Instagram posts or your videos, whatever you're doing. I'm more than keen to see them because there's chances are, because I've said many times, I'm no expert at this you'll probably teach me something. So yeah, good idea. All right, so I have a plate with paint on it that I can't find. It's outside, that's why it's got rocks on it. All right, but I've got other ones that I've used before, so let's use them. All right, so I'm gonna use some of this pearlized green. Kev, did you let Harry know that I'm online? 
Right, so for this instance, I'll try and hold the camera and show you what I'm doing. So my theory is that there's slime coming out of here, and I'll actually put a bit more up there further at a later time, and it's come out and it's dripped under and it's ran onto the pipe and it's now coming down. Well, it doesn't just stop there, does it? So we need to have it run. Oh, the glue on that. Look at that. We need to have it run down here and then sort of taper off in two different spots. There's no right or wrong here, so we just load the brush up. And I pull it on. Like, I don't put a little bit on, scrape it. I pull it on. And that's your spot there. So you're obviously going to have a pool there, so it's going to be fatter. It's going to sit there, and it's going to run down that crack because it's a natural run. And then it'll just peel out. I'm just try and link it up with something down here, see? There you go. So you've now got sewage running down. Oh, sorry, lick waste into the thing. So you can thicken things up like if you wanted to. Just thicken it up a little bit. Add a bit more green, make it a bit more funky. So to make it like really obvious that that's what's happening, so like your green would come up your pipe a bit because obviously it's splashed in. And I will actually go up further with that now while I think of it. It's hard to do because you don't want to get it on everything. And if it gets on, rub it off. See? So that's how I do the sewer pipe. And obviously with waste, it's not going to be thin in every spot. So dab on some thickness to give it a bit of dimension, especially where it's pulling down the bottom there and where it's pulling on that pipe because that's where it pulls to, then it stops, and then it slowly drips down, and then it makes a pull and it goes further down. So anyway, what do we think of that? Look all right? Cool. All right, so while this other stuff's drying, all that grass and moss and stuff like that. I'm pretty happy with the way that's looking. So um, we might put a little bit of grass. So we've got stones up here. You'd have a little bit of grass here where that toxic's gone. Pull that in there a bit. And if you ever, you can use your fingers and just dab and it makes it, gives it a more natural feel than a brush because sometimes when you're using brushes, like it looks like a brush. I just plop that in there so it's like just petered into it a bit. Just touch up anywhere you think would look good with a bit more Lumo on it. I reckon that's looking pretty good. So once we put the stones on, that'll break it up a bit. And I'll put a couple of stones up here, a couple of bits of broken stuff up here to break up the textures a bit. And I think we're good. You like that, Ray? Cool. That's what we like to see. Righto. So now that I've done that, let's look at the base. I'm surprised that super glue didn't destroy my own brush. Cool. All right. So we'll get rid of that for the time being. Put me paint up there. I'll just let that have a little dry. Right. So this is the bit I've got going on as well. This is the backdrop. Now I can't show you, I'll stand it up. I'll grab the camera and see if we can have a better look. I've got a few spots. The dog chewed it. Can you believe that? We've got a new pup. She's about uh, 21 weeks, so what, three and a half months. She's got teeth like friggin' razors, and she chewed it. I couldn't believe it. So there is the wall. And Kev, I don't know if you're on before, but um, hey, Diecast, how you going, buddy? I actually 
to get this texture on the foam, because it's foam board, um, what I did was I black washed it first. You'll see in the video, I don't, in the new video I'm going to put out, you'll see it. I black washed all the bricks first and got the dimension. And then I got black spray paint, which was um, a chemical based one, and give it a light spray. And it just started to eat the brickwork, which gave that really cool texture. That was accidental, to be honest. I can't claim that I was awesome and thought, knew how to do that. And so I started doing it on different spots. And I got, oh, this bloody camera, and I got the effect I got, see? So then I got, um, now, I don't know what you guys in the States call it, if it's quarter inch, what it is, but I got 25 mil PVC pipe, which is electrical pipe. I got the white version, which is communications pipe or plumbing pipe. And I painted it black. No, yeah, I painted it, washed it black. Then I painted it with the bronze paint that I use and just sort of smeared it with my fingers and bits of paper and give it that texture look. I then put dark green on it. So you can some places look like copper, dark green on it. And I just busted it, put a T in it and just busted it up. So it looks shiny in spots and other spots it looks dark. And then I textured in the bracket bit. And after the light's going to show you. I textured all the brackets in and I smashed it and I put... Um, Toxic waste in there, like it's coming out, and I put a little bashed a hole in it with a chisel, and there's another drainage pipe piece. And then obviously I just like put the paint on and just let it drip down. So last night in the shed or the garage, it just ran down and did its thing for me. So that's it. And then the bottom of the pipe, obviously, I put more because it's coming in there. Now the one thing I was going to put on there, if I can find it, give me a second. I was going to put a little stop valve on it, but I'm not sure whether I should or not. So let's ask the question if I've got people I'm looking. So I made this. Where's the camera? And all this was is a, I went to the, uh, we have a place called Spotlight here. It's like um, people go for sewing and all that sort of stuff. And they had these little snap lock buttons, which is, that's all it is. So I just painted it red, I pulled it apart and painted it red. And my theory was that I could get it, drill a little hole in this pipe, probably up near that T intersection there, put it in like a stop valve. So, like it wouldn't be out that far. And that's just got a little nail in it for me to paint it. It would actually go in and look like a little stop valve. But I'm thinking, why would a stop valve be way up there? Like it's got no purpose. So I think I'll leave it off. If you guys think I should put it on, let me know and we'll um, look into it. So that's that. So now that you've seen the whole pipe, now this is probably this stupid dog. So can you see that? The dog thought it'd be great to chew on it and it's bent it and warped it for me. I was like, good on you, dog. So I've just broken the bricks out a bit just to give it a bit more something to look at. I know, I'm not in sewers very often, so I don't know. Bit of broken out there. That's just to sort of, yeah, to break it up. So once Leo's in front of it and he's up on the stand, he stands about that high, it sort of breaks it up a bit. And that's the way I'm going to face him. I thought about going this way, but no, I'm going to go straight on like that. So he's like giving you the death stare. All right, see? I think that looks much better. And it sort of, that breaks it up. You got the because people will be looking at the pipe and the green, whoops, and the green, and that breaks him up from that piece. But what I'm going to do is we might texture that piece there a little bit and put some moss off the bricks and a bit of greenery coming down there. And I just got some old cable I had in the shed, communications copper wire with the plastic still on it, and I just cut it and twisted it a bit to grab the shape. So it looks like there's some old sewer cables running through. I just tucked it up behind the pipe. And it's like you go, I just pull it out at any time. And over there with the dog chewed and I've got to paint it black again, I just cable tie it. Easy. Um, the other thing I did was to hold it onto the board. Excuse me, Leo, we'll get you over there. Oops, shit. So get it on the board, this is the exciting bit. I just cable tied it. See, so the cable tie goes through there and I just painted it brown and put a bit of green on it so it doesn't stand out and just cable tied it through the back. And this stuff I've stuck it to, the, this stuff here, 
Um, I do a lot of sign writing. This stuff's called core flute, and that's what it sticks to. And this is where the PVA glue just would not help me sticking it on. I wish I had to use something else, but we've got what we got. So that's that. Anyone got any questions? All right. Come on, Kev, I thought you would have heaps. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work out what I want to do with this. And the problem with this board is it twisted because I hadn't left it in the sun for too long to dry because the glue, the PVA glue would not dry. And it twisted the whole foam board. I can't bend it back without breaking it. So I'm just going to have to manipulate that as I go. So if it looks a bit, that's what happened, all right? The sun destroyed it. Okay. So I don't know how to hold this up for the best for you guys to see. Might be a camera angle change here in a minute. I can't hold it like that. Let's try something else. How's our water bottle work? Let me try that. All right. So my idea is... I need something to break this up. So I'm going to put a bit of that green stuff we just used on these bricks, and I might use a bit of a green wash and just sort of break the bricks up so they look a bit mossy, and then I'll add the green to it and we'll see how we look, all right? Eight viewers, Jesus, I'm famous. <laughs> so I'm going to use a bit of candy pigment green, only a little bit because it's pretty strong. I use candy off when I'm doing ghost flames and stuff for people. Um, I have another green floating around that is just a cheap green. It's student paint. So you can like just mix. I use it for mixing and just getting the tones I want. Look at that. And as you can see, and you probably can't actually, the first green I did is nearly a blue compared to the other green I did. So that'll give it its real deep tone. All right. So because it's terracotta already or terracotta colour, this green will actually look quite good on it. Uh, a bit of water just to wash it down if I need it. And obviously my panic towel for when I make a mistake. Now, when you do this, don't stress because the best paintbrushes I own are these and these. They're not this, they're these. Because whenever you paint something and you think, oh, that's not very good, you just get your finger and smear it and move it. Oh, dust there. Smear it and you just move it to where you need it to be. So you'll find when I finish painting, all my fingers are usually covered in paint which can be a pain in the ass as well because I touch something and it goes onto something else. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of the dark candy green on. So how can we see this? Can you see it all right? Try and go a bit close, eh? And we need to go, how's that, people? Happy with that? So we'll get a bit of green and we'll just think about where it would be. So let's sit. So the candy green is see straight through it, right? And that's the idea because you want to just make it muddy. All right. All right. And then just use your finger and dirty it out. See? So if you look around the house, your own house, and I'm actually going to put a little bit of black with this. Oh, I should have brown it. No, black, black, black. Black will take it down. Um, if you look around your house outside on stones and stuff where you've got moss and green growing and things like that, it doesn't grow smooth in one beautiful pattern. Some, and you'll find that it, um, I don't know, sometimes it'll patch, it'll be really patchy in spots. I can't tell you how hard this is to paint like this. So that stipples it. And then you get that sort of dirty, grungy look. All right, so we just keep going around doing that. And I've just put a little tiny bit of black in this paint just to make that green a bit darker. Because then it might, yeah, I've got a really dark one now. So. I'll get your finger. Now, this is textured, so this one will work probably even better. There you go. It isn't much, but see, that's too fat there, so I don't like that. So I'll just liven them up a bit. All of a sudden, your brick goes that real, yeah, see what I mean? Working lovely. Look at that. All right, we'll keep going. 
and likes to, with everything for some reason, goes to the corners. So work it to your corner. Now, see that doesn't look right. So dip it off and then come back and put a bit more darker in the corner. It'll take your eye away from the possibility of you making a mistake. So you can randomly do that anywhere you want to put, you think you're going to put like a mossy grass, all right? So in there, oh, I don't even think, whoops, I don't even think I'll adjust that. I'll just leave it the way it was. And that board keeps moving, I'm sorry. Is that that? Cool. So I haven't even used the light green yet. This is just all I've been doing. So. On the top, we can put some moss. You can't see that, but I can. Put a bit of light green there too, just to make it a bit more. Now, you're going to put glue over this and grass, so you're not going to see a lot of it, but you've got to have it underneath it so it covers it in a bit better. And the light green will give it just that highlight to say that there's new growth as well as the old growth. And what I'm doing here is I'm just grabbing the top. I should I and show you? I'm just grabbing the tiniest bit of paint like that, and then I'm just wiping it off and just trying to do the highlight bits. Dry brushing, you might have heard this before. And it's starting to put that real yucky green on it. All right, so go back to a darker green again. And I reckon this might be the last one I do. So it'll be there. Bit of a highlight. Now you wouldn't put any of that metallic green on this because there'd be no reason for there to be any um, of that on this side because there's no pipe, there's no leakage, there's no nothing to give you the idea if that's where it was. Now, just to even it out a bit, where am I on camera? I'll just try and see where I am. You'd put one down here somewhere just to break it up a bit. So I'll go down here and I'll go, can I just see that? Sorry, guys. And I would put that in there. I'll give it a bit of a light touch up. So that that highlight colour is just minimal. I feel like Bob Ross. You have the fizzy hair. So I'll go like that. And you can run it along a bit further. You can like you can have new growth on its own. You don't have to just have the dark green. Right. So to me I need something else. So I've got to move a bit more green. So I'll just put a bit like that. Now even that out. See? Did you find Harry? Keb? Now up the top, there are more, which you can't see. Oops, camera doesn't like that. Try something like that. Oh, yeah. So we might just, I don't, you don't want to do it level with the pipe, which you can't see that, sorry. You want to do it down a little bit, and maybe there would be a good spot. Gives the illusion that you want it to be odd. That's the hardest thing to do with any of this sort of work is making it odd. You don't want what I mean by odd is like I don't mean looks ridiculous, I mean making it a natural odd shape that nature's just done its own thing, it hasn't gone like here, 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 and nowhere else. That's the hardest piece that I've always had trouble finding the right balance. So, I've also learned that a trick I use is, and when I'm drawing, I do this as well. Let's just put a bit of light on this. Is I actually squint at it. I know it sounds stupid, but I squint at it and for some reason it just gives me a better perspective of where I need to put stuff. So 
and you can just grab it and run it along with your finger and it'll just blend it out. See? And that's where I'll put some grass. So it looks like I've, on camera, it looks like I've smeared it. And that's what's cool about it is you can just go back and fix it. There you go. So now looks like a natural part of the brickwork. Now, it's obviously, it's going to happen here because that's where the bricks are broken and that's where the water pools. Um, but you've got to be sort of smart about it and you can't just have it all on that side. You've got to have something that will do it over on this side as well. So I'm just looking naturally here and there's a broken brick there. So I'm going to actually try and put it in there or might put it in there and run it along there a bit. Just want to be subtle about it. Can you see that? You can't see that high. Right, bear with me. So I would try and put it there. Get that dark green going. And then get your finger and smear it the way you want it. So give it that, this gives it that dirty, shitty water look. That's a patch there, so we just smear them out a bit. All right, so there's my green patch thing. Cool. So now the next step I would do is, because you don't want to overdo this back piece, I've got to try and make that a bit yuck. I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that. I need to paint this bit in black because the dog obviously up the top there scratched it with its teeth. And I need to clean this bit out. So what we'll do now is we'll get rid of that. Paintbrush out. Lid on water. I'm talking to myself, sorry. So what happened was I used the PVA glue and the PVA glue had dried and I stood it up like it is now. And it was a warm day. And when I came back, all the PVA glue was running out again. It was like it reheated and just ran out everywhere. It was awful. So um, that's what all that is. So it's actually, it's added a texture. Move this camera back a bit. So what I'm going to attempt to do now is, I don't know whether I should try this or not. I'm going to use a bit of paper towel. I'm going to dip it into black paint. And I'm going to use it as a wash and just see if I can rough it in and make it look better than it is. All right. So I would use a brush, just a crappy old brush. If I can find a crappy old brush, there's one. And I actually paint the paper with the black rather than dipping it in because then you only get like one spot with paint on. You get one big blob in one spot. Um, this could be an absolute disaster, people. Live. All right, so I just do that. That's what I was talking about. I've just painted that. And all I'm going to do is, so just come over here. I'm going to get it and just rub it. I'm trying to fill in them all the shitty spots. And you can see it's starting to give it that texture look, which is cool. I'm going to add, I'm going to go a step further here, and I'm just going to put some paint in spots where I need it. And then use the brush a bit more, uh, the paper a bit more. Now for that piece there, I'm just going to paint that while I've got it. Stupid dog. Um, when this is all finished, some people seal it. Um, you can use Mod Podge and things like that. I'm not going to seal it at all. I'm going to leave it exactly the way it is. Like look at that. I think I may have. Why don't you just black up the edges with it if you want? Lay a bit of black paint on them. All right. Now let's give it a bit more of a texture look. See? I may have fixed it. All right, cool. Now you can also use a bit of black on a rag, a bit of paper towel like this to touch up the edges. So what I mean by that is you, we're doing that sort of rough look to make them look like old shitty bricks. So what you can do is the same piece of paper you've got your paint on, 
add a bit of water to it. Water's your friend. And then just give it a slight rub. See, so and all your crappy edges look a bit crappy. All right, there you go. So it's just roughed it up a bit. Righto, so now that we've done that, then where are you? Lid on water. Paint away so I don't spill it. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the uh, moss stuff that I bought. Hello, Governor. <laughs> Hi, mate. How are you? <laughs> All right, Governor. God. I've even got a pommy accent. Hello, Governor. Is that better? All right, so you're going to have to bear with me here. I'm going to try and do this as I go, and this is really hard to do when it's not standing up. So we've got our bricks that we've distressed here, and the idea was we're going to put, like, some moss in here just to make it sort of a bit more appealing. So what I'll do is I've got to put the camera down for a tick, and you can look at Leo. So hello, Leo. And we'll get that glue going again. And my moss. So for those that have just joined, like Harry, um... I stole this off my old man. He used to do railway models when he was a lot younger and he had a heap of stuff hidden away in boxes. And this is just like a coarse bone. I didn't see it, sorry. And it's mainly green with a highlight of yellow in it and a little bit of red. It's perfect for making like grass or moss, I should say. So we'll use a bit of that. And I've also got a bit of this stuff I use for making bushes, etc. And I'll add a little bit of that in here and where I need to. All right. So I'm using this glue again because it seemed to work perfect last time. Not that super glue shit that ruined it. Lid on. Paintbrush. Now I'm going to stand up while I do this so I can see what I'm actually doing. And I'm going to try and point the camera. Sorry about the camera movement, ladies and gentlemen. I wonder if it'll hold there. No, doesn't want to work. How am I going to do this? All right, I have to hold it by hand, people. Right, so get a bit of glue and work out where you want to put this stuff. So load her up, and I'm going to put it there, across there, and down there. Put a little bit, just sprinkle over there, a little bit there, and a little bit there. All right, so all we do is grab your green. And sprinkle. Just don't go crazy with it. All right, so now that you've got that on there, it looks terrible. Squash it down. It'll grab. Now, because you've painted this bit as well, and that's black and it's still a little bit wet, if a bit falls on there, so what? When you finish, paint it over with black again and it'll give it texture like dirt. That's another cool way of getting the dirt texture. All right, so next one. So we've got a bit there. But don't overdo this stuff. So we want to go maybe here and run a bit down there. And it's obviously going to be running across here. I'm just going to put a blob there and we'll go a big blob there and a bit like that. A bit more of the funky cold green. Patty, patty, patty. All right, so that's what we're working with here. So when I um, have great lighting in this room, yeah, I should have. Harry, I've got the main light on, got that light on, got all those lights on, and I've got the window open. So that's where the green goes, right? So you've got mould growing there. You've got your um, sewage, toxic sewage going there. You've got to add a little bit more green down in here because it grows everywhere pretty much. And you'd probably want to put a bit up in here somewhere too. So we'll do that, right? So we just randomly grab a spot. So I'm going to go. Leo is going to stand here. So I'm going to go here. There's no wrong here, remember? It's in nature. All right, so I've just gone there like that. 
and see her for the glue. Husband's picking this crap up. <clears throat> no, no. Oh, there's a bit more there. Hang on. Tap him down. Force him into the little grooves and that you've made on your bricks. All right. So now you're getting a bit of work to it. Um, there would be some along here, along the edge down the bottom. It's the last point of your brickwork, so I'm going to put a little bit there as well. It runs along there. I can find the glue. There's the glue. So just like that. Just let it fall from a height and it'll grab a nice natural fall. Tappity tap. Now, the trick is with this stuff, you can go overboard very fast. And all of a sudden, it's just all green and you think, oh, what the hell is he doing? So I'm going to look for just an – I've got a piece there and a piece there and obviously there. So when you go back the whole shot, you can see that it's heavily bottom left. So you need to come up and put some up here somewhere. So I would be maybe thinking in here. I might just drop a piece in here just to get it a bit greener. So I'm going to get a bit of the old thank you very much. What's all the news, Harry? Over there. I um, spoke to a friend of mine who's going to that Comic-Con I told you about. And the co-creator of um, Ninja Turtles are going to be there. And he happens to be selling my Ninja Turtle art. So with a bit of luck, we might get a signature on some stuff. Which would be very cool. I'll be very happy with that. And he's got, um, I forget the guy's name. Um, the guy who does Mario's voice, he's there as well. Um, some wrestlers and that too, mate. But you know I'm not into the wrestling that much. So there you go. So that's my mossed up wall. Um, I'm actually thinking that there's nothing on this side of the pipe whatsoever, so we might just hide a bit of moss down in here as well. Sort of break it up. So we'll go here. And I'm just going to run it. I'll put it in under the pipe. This will be a trick. So I'll just sort of smear that on there. Sorry, Harry, what did you say, buddy? Uh, must look so real. Thank you. Aren't you a big fan of MOT, Masters of the Universe? Yeah, I love Masters of the Universe. I grew up with it. And it's funny because the kids, my or my youngest is six, and she sits and watches it all the time. I tried to catch her out the other day and was asking a question. She was naming every character I could think of. I run out of characters. No, no. So there's, oops, that just came off. All right, so that's how it looks. <laughs> that's my broken hobbit foot. Look how fat it is. So I've smashed my ankle. Look at it. It's huge. I'm supposed to have a boot on, but it's pulled all the bloody tendons in my toes, so I can't wear a boot. Look how fat my foot is. So now you know why I'm in agony, bud. Right out. So that's the whole backboard done. So now I've got to let that dry, and then I'll go and shake it off, and all the green moss will come out. And then you can just work out where else you want to put anything. All right, so camera back. I've certainly got a great grip on the earth, my man. All 
right, I'm going to get some rocks that I've made and we'll come back and we'll see how they dry they are and we'll stick them down, I reckon. So we'll get rid of this for a tick. So you didn't see this, Harry, but this is where I'm at with the base itself. So we've just added some moss in and some rocks down here. Um, same here, I've added these two stepping stones and added a bit of paint and I put all the sewer water in. It doesn't do it justice. I should, if I could get it outside, you'd see what it means. And we'll try the light off. Is that up there? No. And I've just made the sewer pipe with the sewage coming out of it. And what happens is, light back on, is the bridge will sit like this. And then Leo will sit on top of that. <laughs> hey, Kalo. It'd be awesome to stay home and play with pigs all day. All right, so I'll sit that there for a tick and I'll go get the stones and we'll um, go from there. Hang in. Hang. While I walk off with my broken foot. Right, right, here we go. Thanks, Graham. So now I've made some little stones. They're exciting, tiny little stones. I made them out of stones you use on the bottom of your fish tank, all shapes and sizes. Thank you very much. So if you can't find them, then go out in the garden. That's where everything lives. Um, I'm going to super glue these down as fast as I can. But I'll lay them out first, right? So the idea is, let's see if we can get a better shot of this. How's that? Everybody happy? Leonardo is the best turtle. Should we have an argument on this? Who thinks who's the best turtle out of the four of them? All the younger people go Michelangelo. All the uh, all the people that are angry go Raphael. So I'm I'm a Leo. Right up. So obviously with this diorama, I'm logically thinking that that's got a bit of broken concrete out of it, like that. So if there's broken concrete, you would expect to be a couple of broken rocks or a couple of bits of concrete sitting down there. So I'm going to do exactly that, and I'm going to put one over the slime. See? And three is always the better option. There you go. So I'll just glue them down like that. And then I'll paint them up, just touch them up with a bit of colour, and that's where they'll stay. So I can see this one's got a bit of yellow on it. That's all right, we'll just turn it around now. All righty. So, yeah, I'm going to super glue that down. I might use a different stone than that one because it's showing a bit of shitty yellow. That one isn't. Look at that. Thanks very much. Um, so I'm going to put one there. Fire out. That one just flew away. I'm just plopping them in little spots where I think they might look all right. Try and even it out a bit so it's not just. There you go, so that's sort of breaking it up a bit. Now on the other side, there would be a bit of broken stone 
né, tá bem, Mari? One uh, in there. And if I've got another little one, I do. How's that look? Just breaks the scene up. How's the foot, Scott? Foot's terrible, buddy. I've been uh, in agony the last two days, just trying to get that tendon to stitch back on on its own, and or because it's oh what half, just over half torn off, so it's half hanging there. So once it sort of settles down a bit, I'll be fine. So I find that I go a couple of days, foot's good, then I go two days, I'm in agony and I'm laying down all the time, not being able to do anything. It's very frustrating. So today's a good day, hence the reason I'm out here. All right. Now, here's the hard bit. This shits me, this bit. I'm trying to super glue these little dudes down. So I'm going to go, I don't know if you can see this. I'm not looking. Right, now this super glue is awesome. It sticks within seconds. Sam, so, man, what you got? I love your tabletop. Is it comic book covers? Yes, mate. So the whole top. I made it's all Batman covers with a big Batman logo on it. So it's about it goes from way over there to way over there. I think in memory there was about 320 comic book covers I had to make, chop and change. And the other tabletop I made, it's all like panels of you can't really see it. It's all panels of um, superhero. So so that one took a long time to make, and we ran it out on the printer and stuck it down. And the cool bit is, if I get sick of it. I can just pull it off, rip it off, and make another one. Pain meds. Oh, I've had some wicked pain meds. The other night, um, Endone, which I think in Yankee land you call it Oxy. I had one of them and nothing happened, so I thought, oh, I better take another one. So I took another one and I was tripping out. It was wicked. I think I was on uh, the tag team. I think I was on live with um, Teddy Toy Hunter. And Sandman, and I don't remember what I was talking about. I think I was off my head. And they probably didn't even notice any difference. So I'm just gluing down my little rocks here. My little breaks of concrete, nice and gentle, because these stupid top little tweezers are really hard to use. But, yeah, it sticks down like pretty quick like that. I can't move now. Yeah, Batman, Batman and Spider-Man were the ones I grew up with. I always remember it when I was young, like in the 70s. And, um, yeah, then as progression grew, I went with um, He-Man. But I always go back to Batman and Spider-Man. And I've got a collection like non of the 1966 Batman stuff I love. So if anyone ever gets anything cool and you want to be nice to me, send it to me. I love it. They bought out, actually, something <laughs> – you can't send this. Um, they bought out um, pinball machines. I forget who they were made by, but they were 1966-based and they had the most awesome artwork as the pinball backboards. And I would have bought one just for the artwork on the back. So I'm actually going to try and find it, find it, and um, print, my, print myself out one of them to put on the wall because they were awesome. No, I think there's one, they are in the Batmobile and Batman and Robin sitting there and the lights flash on the top. That was really cool, that one. And then there was another one where they made it really um, poppy where um, they had the Riddler and the Joker and Batman, King Tut and all these guys in it, Mr. Freeze, and they were all punching each other and Catwoman was kicking someone in the face. They had the big pals and all that. So um, that would be awesome. That would be really cool to get. And I was watching... I don't know how old the TV show is from you guys. It's from the States, obviously. It's American Pickers, and that was on here the other night, and I was watching that, and he found an enamel one where it was obviously tin and that it was pressed out, so the Batman and logo was all pressed out, so it stood out about that far from the actual board. It was all painted up in enamel. It was all shiny and beautiful. I would have killed to get that. So I've had some luck. I've been to a couple of... Um, I'm just going to put a rock, I think, right there. 
I um, have been to a couple of markets for um, where Kev goes a lot, these sort of places, and I found a 1966 Batman jigsaw intact. I couldn't believe it. Um, and it had been wrapped in plastic, and it was like 98% perfect. I was flipped out. Yeah, American pickers, yeah, we see it. Hang on a minute, so I've got to read some notes here. Um, someone got a whip chase, did you? Nice work, where'd you find that? Uh, animated series, how do you own the whole series on DRT? <laughs> Why does that not surprise me, Kit, right? I watch American Pickers for Real. Yes, we watch American Pickers for Real. My wife hates it. Um, Mike Wolf is the one of the main guys. My wife just finds him irritable as hell, and that's probably why I watch it, just to give it a shit. Um, so, yeah, that's on here. On, we get lots of American shows like that over here, but then, like, when I'm on the tag team chats with you guys, you're talking about stuff I've never heard of. Like, Kev was showing the French Fry guy and... Um, Stuff like that, and I had no idea what you were talking about. I'd never seen it. But then we get really cool. Yeah, what's that? The little chubby guys on cool. I don't like the skinny fellas. Yeah, the skinny fellas, Mike Wolf. And I forget the little chubby guy. Um, yeah, but he seems all right. Yeah, the guy with the beard, yeah. Probably because he's got a beard. Anyone with a beard's cool. And they're up here. I actually think. Um, Harry needs to grow a beard. If he's running those mafia glasses, mate, you need to grow a beard. All right, so what I'm going to do now is they've stuck on good and proper. I'm just going to go outside and I'm going to shake the moss off this stuff because that's been piled on and there's glue underneath. So whatever hasn't gone into the glue will come off and I'll brush a bit of that off and I'll be back in two minutes. So you can have a little bit of pop collection and I'll go and do that. So all I'm going to use is one of these brushes that's dry and it's nice and light. I'm just going to flick it off and just see how much is left. I'll be back in two. Talk amongst yourselves. All right, so this is what I'm left with. So it's taken the majority of the moss off. And it's left me out with like a more natural sitting. So it's not lumpy. It's nice and smooth. Now, you can actually paint that greener if you wanted to. If you want to put some darker patches on it, I'm not going to because it's a dark scene as it is already. So I don't think we need any more darkness in it. So what's been happening while I've been away? And I've got this leftover paint from earlier. So you want to just tease that black out again. You don't want much because this is like dry brushing. It's a little bit of water, tease out the black. And like you can see how hot it is here today because that is what I put on this morning when I started this stream. That's dry. I'm sweating in here. All right, so you get your black. Tease it out. Hey, now I can see it. So just with a bit of black, I'm just going to sort of go around the bottom of the... Here, I'll see if I can do this for you because I'm a nice guy. I'm just going to just go around the back of the rocks a bit and just darken them up. Obviously, rocks aren't all nice and shiny. That one's got a bit of yellow on it. Fix that up. You don't notice a lot of these mistakes until you take a photo of it. So if you ever do an art, I do a lot of drawing and stuff, 
what I like to do is stand back and take a photo of it and then look at the photo and you get a different perspective on it. Right, so that's your greys on your rocks. So now I'll get green, so I'll piss that off. And we'll get, I've got a heap of greens and stuff here, all mixed up. So the, I'll use this um, candy green I've got. I'm just going to put a bit on top of the rocks. And I need to put actually the lighter green because it doesn't show. So the lighter green would indicate that it's got a bit of moss growing on it because it's a shitty sewer. Nice bloody camera. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Try again. So you just patch it. Don't paint the whole top. and Just put little bits on where you need a little bit on. See that? Now I've got a nice green to it. Right now. See? Find the rocks. Now, I might put a bit of um, that funky green on there. We all like funky green. All right, so all my rocks are now the natural colour they should be. If you wanted, you could put more moss down along here. Up to you. I don't think I will, but I might just give it a, like a pale green patch just to sort of take it off. Now, if it gets a bit dicky on you, dip your brush in a bit of water like I just did and smear it around. It'll dry because the cork will soak it in. And if you're not happy with it, rub your finger on it. I do this all the time. And it will soak in and it'll go patchy like it's supposed to be like that. Like you're always meant to do it. So now I'm just going across here because it's going to be a little bit dirty and that's not going to be nice. I'm just putting the tiniest bit on with a bit of dirty water. So I'm just getting the tiniest bit on here. And give it a test on the side. Yep, just a bit dirty, see? Just load it in. That takes that sort of edge out of it. All right. So I want to use this for photos later in the track. So you've got to you've got to think about this stuff. Just get in there and load it all in, see? It just puts that dirty stain on it. Dirty stain. Nice, and that's like the word moist. All right. So that's done that. Now, if you're looking at it from this perspective, and I know I'm getting a bit um, stupid, Sorry, Con tomorrow. what are you guys getting for you guys going? Target con, you're going to have to explain a bit more what target con. So on the opposite side, because you're going to be looking at this, along there you're going to see that front edge. So you would do the same thing, all right? You want to dirty that up. And I'll make it a bit darker this time. I'll just add a little bit of black to it. But it's still a wash, all right? So just check it over here. And then you just give it a bit of a rubbing. You don't want to create a straight line, though. If it goes patchy like that bit just did there, so what? I'll even, I'll even add to it. You can paint this shit. See that? You just dab it with a bit of green. Make it darker, soaks it in, lovely. So as you can see, that's just sort of taking that, oops, fix that up, taking that shitty edge of it, and you do the same here. I'm going to keep looking across to make sure I'm in the right spot. So you can darken it out with a bit of green in there. Let's take it off a bit, see? Because not all moss is going to be nice bright green in the same spot, is it? Now, these tiny little bits take forever, but it's well worth doing when you look back at it because you think, oh, yeah, that looks more natural. And that's what you're after. You don't want it to look like it's totally fake. 
even though we know it is. So just dirty it up a little bit. Now, that bit there to me is too green. If you were stepping off a bridge, which is on there, and you're stepping onto that all the time, it'd be weathered and it wouldn't have this bright green patch, right? So I'm going to grab a bit of the candy colour, the dark green. And let's hope this works. I'm just going to dab it on the inner part there, see? And it just puts that, takes all the highlight out of most of it and makes it look a bit more natural, see? So this is where we're at. Of course, it changes when it dries. You don't have to really care about this piece over here because that's the back block, right? No one's going to care about that. So I'll put this down. You can stare at the amazement that is my diorama. I'll turn around a bit for you so you can chat about what I need to do. And I'll go and get the back bit and wipe the excess off that and I'll bring that in while I look. I actually don't want any from the target releases. I've so lost interest in pop vinyls. The only pop vinyls I've seen that I'm even interested in lately are um, the Jim Henson holding um, Ernie and Jim Henson holding Kermit. They're about the only two that I've really got into. Two minutes. Jeez. Hey right, Judson, welcome aboard, bud. So I've just bought the bait, the back in. I need broccoli out then. That would have been disastrous. And I'll set this up and I'll show you what it looks like. And I've done the moss, but the moss needs changing a bit. So this is where I'm at. Right, so the moss, the light's not helping you. Can you see the moss? Yeah. So the moss looks a lot more natural now because it's taken its natural shape. That's like you brush it off, that light's killing it, isn't it? There you go, is that better? So the moss looks more natural, like it's actually grown there. It's supposed to be there. See that? So now, obviously, the next step you'd be is set your bridge. So we, I've made the bridge. I've deliberately made it. So let me stand that up. The sides are dirty and the front panel's dirty, but that's shiny because that's where everyone steps through. That's the theory behind it, okay? So I would stick that, centerize that with... The two stones you added in the front here, you don't want it to look there. Yeah? But you just got to make sure you get the right edge. Which edge looks better? I might go that one. Probably the totally wrong way. All right, so that will go like that. Everyone's looking cool. And then obviously Leo, who's so heavy, it's nuts, will plop right there. I've got to manipulate his legs. There's so much articulation in these necker figures. They're awesome. So that's what you would get. If I had a light, I could, oh, maybe I can use my phone. Hang on. That's what you get. What do you think, boys? 
Is there anything I need to add to it? Can anyone see? Because I'm totally open to suggestions here. This is cool because you guys get an opinion on it too. And the best bit, I think, about like the toxic stuff behind him, there's lots, right? But because he's in front of it, it blocks it, but it gives you enough of an indication that there's toxic waste coming out of that pipe. That's the same with the, like, when you look down here, it's shiny. Out the sunlight, that goes all shiny. So there you go. So the last thing I'm actually going to do is, is the moss itself is like green, really bright green in spots. All I would do is get that dark green again and sort of dab it on and sort of take that shine out of spots because moss doesn't naturally grow bright green everywhere. So I'll do that now, all right? So bear with me. So I don't know, do you guys collect these Necker Ninja Turtles or any other Necker pieces? Because they are amazing, the articulation in them. You can pose them any way you want. It's so cool. I've got that one. I've got a Batman one, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and I've got a Deadpool one. And if Deadpool come with that many accessories, I had to get it. Whereas Leo only came really with some hands, a bit of pizza, a toxic waste canister, and um, two swords. But your Deadpool had heaps. All right, so let's just make this smart and safe. So I was saying before, if you ever wanted to make one of these, and I've stuck mine down to a bit of particle board, so it's heavy on the base. But if, like, I was sending one of these to the States, um, you could make this with magnets. I bought these little magnets like this. So you could make the base, and like, I just stuck this down, but you could put magnets in that, and it just snaps on. So you could actually pack it flat, and then when people get it, they just snap it all together. And what you would do is, on the back piece here where you haven't painted, I would insert uh, magnets across here, like heavier duty magnets than that. They wouldn't hold it. But you could get a lot heavier magnets and magnets on the base of the board over here underneath your pipe. So you just snap it all together. It would be so cool. Like sending someone a present like that would be amazing. All right, so let's get rid of this for a tick. And my light back on. Ooh. Yeah, because it's really light. Like for postage, it wouldn't cost much because it's so lightweight. But yeah, from if I was to send it from Australia, it cost me a bomb. Postage is shit. Steven bastards. All right, so let me green under here. Don't want to make a mess. Yeah. All right, so go back to my greens. So what I'm talking about is my pellets of greens. And there's nothing over that, so I'm safe. Yeah, I'll try and get this so you can see. All right, so I'm just getting a bit of water and we're gonna make that dark green again. Just test on a bit of white to see how green it really is. And if it's too green, add the black into it. I did a lot. So you went from that green to that sort of deeper, mark, murkier green, which is what you want. And you can always add a bit of brown to it too. And just go in and dab it on spots and take away the total brightness of your moss. And it'll soak in. So you'll look at it and think, oh, no, I've made a mistake. But you haven't. Just add a bit of darkness to it. Gives it a more natural appeal. And you can do the opposite too. Like if you really wanted to, you could go and add white to it. And if it gets on the bricks, rub your fingers on it. Is Harry still on? I'm dying to see you with a beard, man. That would just be classic. I just can't imagine it. I think, who's on? I don't know who's on. Anyways. Judson, I reckon, runs a beard. Teddy Toyana runs a beard. I run a beard. Kilo runs a beard. Um, who else? Oh, I've got a Spider-Man in the bed, man. I'm going to 
Alex Ross, Batman. So that was for Sandman. He was asking before. They're the two. So we just darken this last piece up. And I think once I'm done this, we're done. All right. Get more water. Spit up there. All right, I think I'm done. Sometimes you can go too hard and screw it. I'm not going to do that. All right, so let's put this sucker together and see how it looks finished. The mossy mood effect. Moss is awesome, buddy, and you can use anything. All right, so I'll stick that up there. Try and find it. Now, it won't stand straight because I've got a PowerPoint behind it, but it'll be close. Let's see how it looks. Oh, yeah, I've got to stick me ladder down. All right, for those of you that haven't been on long, this is the stuff I use to stick stuff down with. Um, I'll put a bit on this, make sure I go the right way. Once it's down, it's down. You don't get any shit back, it's nuts. But Leo's so heavy, I need to add it on, so it's got a bit of strength. All right, so we'll plop that down, get it centered. Once it's on, it's on. All right, so now the bridge is on. And for, I don't know if you've seen this earlier, Kilo, you wouldn't have made. I made these. It's like this took ages to make and make them look like rocks. And they were going to be like bridge sizes, bridge size like that. There's two of them. So you know, I really textured the hell out of them to make them try and look as cool as they would. Judd's and rock on a big beard, is he? Big as that. And I made these little bridge things because I thought, oh, that's add some dimension to the whole scene, which is great. And when I put Leo on there, the guy he's heavy. His feet bloody got in the way and knocked them off. Pain in the ass. Unless I make him like squat him in and pull his legs right in, I don't know if I can. I can't put them on. And that actually adds really good dimension to it. So I might have to save them for another day. Right. So let's set this up. Bear with me. Now, naturally, it would sit like this. Just line them up. Now, articulation, amazing. I just love these, the articulation in these things. You can move him so many ways and straighten him up and give him balance. Like even his feet rotate, which is just cool. The last thing you want is a little bloke going down and smashing. Right, so he's not going to rotate his foot a bit. He's got bad feet like me. All right, I reckon I'm done. All right, boys, what do we reckon? We're going to beat you in the beard. Challenge, Judson. So there is Leo. It's not a great light to show him. Hang on. I'm going to try and help that. Excuse me. So there he is. Gosh, how far back do I have to go? I think he's coming out pretty cool. The light does not help him in one bit. Sorry about the camera, guys. So there you go. What do we think? Thank you. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed with that. I was going to add spider webs to it and things like that, but I think that's overkill for what it is. I think the sewerage and stuff's coming out pretty cool. And, well, it helps when you have an awesome 
model as well. So there you go, guys. That's my um, diorama done and the things I use. If you want to know how to make any of these things or um, you want some tips on how to make little dioramas, etc., give me a yell out because, as you know, I do little ones as well. So, yeah, I've done heaps of these. Um, I did a little Master of the Universe one that had Skeletor on it, but I put Skeletor away. That's not helping. See? So, like, I made lava. So, yeah, that's Skeletor standing there, but this Skeletor, I think I had. Where is he? I had that Skeletor. Where is he? Oh, dickhead. Yeah, I had that Skeletor standing there, but I'd rather him in the case. So, yeah, I made bases like that. I actually want to make one for my little Batman car. I think mean, that'd be cool. Um, there's the other ones I've got while I talk about it. How far does this cord go? So these are both NECA figures as well. The Deadpool one, I was just amazed at how many things it came with. So he's got a machine gun down here. He's got a big knife in around the corner. He's obviously got this one here. He's got a pistol jammed in the corner. Like I think it's a big Desert Eagle or something. He's got two swords. He's got another knife in his back. It was just nuts. And it came with like 10 hands and heaps of other stuff. Whereas Batman here, he only came with the battering. That was frustrating. I, it'd be cool if he had a grappling or something that came with him. But that was it. So he's pretty much, that's it. But whereas Deadpool here, I can flip him around and put heaps of stuff on him as I need him. So that's that. So there you go, guys. Two hours of me talking shit. So I might do a Deadpool one next. We'll see how it comes out. All right, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. That's enough. I'm going to um, pack all my shit up and um, no doubt I'll talk to you on the tag team and everywhere else. Thanks for joining in, guys, and have a great day. See yous.